Is that an invite that I use? Hold on. Connecting. There I am. I'm in. You're, I see you. Huh. I'm in too. Okay, that's pretty good. So, so we still need six people in order to conduct the meeting. We've had uh, bad internet connections in Shootsbury. I don't know about you guys. Can you guys, um, can you hear me and see me okay? Yes, I can hear you and see you. I can see you. I can hear okay. you. Arlene and Joe are on mute. I can hear you and I can see you. Okay, good. <laughs> so, so far we have one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that makes a quorum. One two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So I'll keep admitting people. And uh, hi, everybody. I can't see everybody. Can you hear me, Jen? Now I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then I'm all set. Okay. Bob and Joe and Tracy, you guys are on mute, but that's okay. I'm assuming you can all hear me. All right. So as long as my phone is going to pick up uh a hot spot here. I, I went up to town hall to try to do it. Now I'm trying to get this. Tracy, have we disconnected our call? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Hang up on me anyway. Okay. Yeah, you're. We're not. We're not. All right. So of course, now um, that Jennifer's gone all the way up to town, the internet's back here. <laughs> <laughs> um. Thank you guys for making time to come today. And uh, what I thought I'd do is um, just first have us introduce ourselves and I'll run through a couple of things and we'll see if we can talk a little bit about what some next steps would be. I'm gonna share my screen occasionally and I might need help because I've never done screen sharing before. <laughs> So does anyone know how to do screen sharing? <laughs> no. Sure. You can be guided through it. Right, well, there's got to be a way. Yeah, maybe Tom, I think Tom just- Do you want to share your screen right now? No, but when I'm ready, can you help? I can imagine, yeah. Are you on a computer or your phone? Oh. I'm on a computer. Yeah, down at the bottom, there might be a green share screen button that will help you out. Yeah, that's basically. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. It's pretty self-explanatory okay. from there. So um, I'm Jennifer Wallace. <laughs> and uh, I, I had been involved in proposing this task force. So I'm also um, involved in coordinating this meeting anyway. I mean, we can talk about I don't need to have the coordinator role. I don't mind it, but you know, maybe that should be a group decision for now is to just see, are you all happy if I keep coordinating it or we can trade off eventually, but I thought I would just put that out there that I'm not attached to coordinating. Um, so let's introduce ourselves. I guess we can't see everybody, but this is our committee. I don't see anyone who's not on our, well, Mark Rivers is here. so. So that's great. But um, the other people, uh, Mark, you'll introduce yourself, but anybody else so far who's on the meeting is also on our committee. So I'll turn it over to you all to just give a little introduction. Tracy, we'll start with you since I see you on the screen right next to me. Hi, I'm Tracy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm on the Stormwater Task Force and I'm glad to be here. Okay, good. Although I do really be, I want to be watching the uh, the press conference right now, but I've I've put it aside. <laughs> okay, I, uh, but part of this is for the minutes too, which Mark gave me the greatest technique that he uses for LWAC is that he does the minutes after the meeting by watching the YouTube recording. 
because that way he can be fully present for the meeting and not be trying to catch the meeting and do the minutes. So us mentioning our names at the beginning is, is important and useful for that. So thank you, Tracy. So next. Uh, I'll okay. go. My name is Bob Douglas. Uh, uh, I have a house on Lake Drive and I'm on the Conservation Commission for Shoot Three. Great. Jim? Okay, uh, I'm Jim Moore. I'm on Great Pines Drive Extension, um, just up the road from Bob. Uh, I, don't, I am uh, the West Side Road Coordinator for uh, the Lake Wyola Association. So, um, and I moved here about four years ago, but have been coming up into the lake area for about 10 or 12 years. So that um, familiar, pretty familiar with what's going on. Great. Hi. I'm sure, whoop, whoop. Joe, are you speaking? No, I'll let you go, I'll go after All you. right, I'm Sherilyn Galinsky. We've lived at the lake for, um, part-time at the lake for over 30 years. And I'm on the Lake Wyola Association. I serve as a clerk. And um, uh, my my hometown is Deerfield, Massachusetts. Great. I guess it's my turn. And you're by telephone tonight. Sorry, go ahead, Joe. My name is Joe Salvador. I live on Merrill Drive. I was on uh, the roads committee for the Lake Association and that's about it. <laughs> okay, good. And Tom? Hi, I'm uh, Tom Seifert. I live on South Laurel Drive, kind of uh, straight across from the Randall Road uh, beach area. And um, I've lived in town for seven years. I'm also an associate member on the planning board. Um, that's about it for now. Nice to meet you all. You. Nice to meet you. So Jennifer. we have, so I didn't say other me being Jennifer Wallace that um, I live on Pine Drive at the lake. Tracy? I also didn't do any of that either. I, li I live on Shore Drive. Um, I'm an LWA member and I'm a former LWA board member and Roads Committee co-chair, former Roads Committee co-chair. And so we have two other um, members of our committee who aren't here right now. Um, one is Eric Stoker. He is on the select board. And the other is um, Stephen Johnson, who is the highway department. So they may have sign-in troubles. Um, Steve so Sullivan. I'm not sure. Steve Sullivan. Sullivan. Sorry. Steve Sullivan. So um, besides uh, introductions, I wanted to mention that when the select board approved this committee, they approved 11 members. So technically, we have um, two vacancies. So if anyone has ideas of people who they think would be great, you know, that have some expertise or interest in stormwater um, and erosion management ideas or funding ideas, um, any of that would be most welcome. And you can um, give their names to me. They would have to get presented to the select board and appointed, but uh, keep your ears open. It would be great to have a full complement of, of members our quorum will always stay six because it's based on the 11 members. So having the two others, not to mention, you know, other people to weigh in on ideas and stuff could be helpful for that purpose. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say is we can decide if we want to exchange phone numbers and emails. Um, there is this suggestion that we all get a Shootsbury email. I think one of you at least has already done that. Yay. <laughs> um, but it could be helpful, especially on a night like tonight where, you know, getting in touch with people was nearly, I mean, it was impossible other than that I do have Tracy's phone number because I couldn't reach anybody by internet. So um, do people have any, does anyone have any objection to sharing email addresses and phones? Yeah. Um, when, yeah. when I went to take the oath, 
um, the town clerk suggested using uh, the Shootsbury dot first name dot last name Gmail simply because if anything, any documents were requested, you could turn over everything on that account without opening the rest of your account too. Yeah. So there may be okay. advantages to setting up the separate Gmail account. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I just haven't gotten to it. So, so why don't we, why don't we proceed with, if, if you want to send me an email with your, um, a phone number and email address, then I can make a master list and circulate that to people. Okay, and Tom has his hand up. Yeah, kind of echoing what, uh, is it Jim or James? Jim. Jim, yes. thanks, I'm Tom. Um, what um, Jim just said, I would also just wanna caution people about sending texts as opposed to making phone calls um, with those phone numbers. Um, at the last select board meeting, they spoke about a, a I guess basically a problem with um, personal email accounts being used by some town people for public uh -huh. records requests. And um, they intimated they're going to switch to a whole Shootsbury system possibly within the next year. So um, anyway, just to underscore all of that. Tom, could you give more clarity about what they said about texts? They didn't say anything about texts, but I'm just saying any written communications should really be restricted to a dedicated Shootsbury account. And that doesn't exist as a text unless you have a separate phone number or something that's a public records text, you know, okay. source. Yeah, so um, all written communication is potentially retrievable or requestable, et cetera, um, even if it's on a text. So uh, no text means no record. <laughs> um, so anyway, just- That's, that's great. Uh, and um, also, there are these open meeting laws about conducting business on emails or, or deliberating in any form other than the form we're in right now. So, but it's purely for um, getting in touch with each other, not um, not doing business that way. So now everybody has it down as far as the our status as special municipal employees and the conflict conflict of interest laws and the open meeting laws you know everyone has their paperwork for that and knows what you have to do and get stuff back to grace and all that mm -hmm. that's all pretty clear okay good okay so now i might be ready to share a screen and let's see if i can do this without um causing too much hassle so first i thought I would share the screen of what our charge is. So I'm hitting share, multiple participants. And then how do I find, I have the document I want to share, but how can I get that shared? Does it display it as something you can just double click on? Let me try that. No, there's just a, no. Oh, here we go. Okay, now can you guys see this? No. Uh, okay. Oh, well, you're on the phone, right, Charlene? No, I'm on. My, I'm on oh, my okay. computer, um, but I'm down at the Kate. But um, I am yeah. on a computer. So no, I don't see it either. All right. So share. Oh, now I have something different here. Documents. Sorry, you guys. I, my intention was. Was to do all this beforehand. Mm -mm. Okay, well, I'll just read it then. Did you send it to us on email? I uh, I think you saw it in the beginning. So so what I wanted to say is that so this is our this is what the select board approved for us to do. So we are to read the previous studies, 
And the previous studies include, uh, let's see, there was a stormwater improvement study in 2007, a wildlife habitat evaluation report in 2019, a community resilience building workshop report that was in 2020, and the watershed based plan for Lake Wyola, which is the FERCOG report uh, of last year and going into this year, still waiting for the, um, the complete sign off from DEP and the release of the final report. But I think I understand that the DEP has approved it, it just hasn't been released. So besides getting familiar with all those previous studies, and we can talk about this. I mean, I think the FERCOG report is the most up-to-date and provides us with the best starting point. Um, so the second part of the charge is to identify stormwater erosion hotspots using these studies and making current site visits um, if we feel like we need to. Um, make sure that the most our opinions are the most up to date, and then propose and prioritize specific projects or phases of projects that would be used for fundraising, assuming there be a variety of different grants and models for different purposes. Identify those funding options, and then make follow up presentations to LWAC and Lake Wyola Association, the Select Board, and CONCOM. So I went through that pretty quickly. You guys do have that in an email, but is that a a charge that everyone's kind of familiar with and you know what's ahead of us? Any questions about it or anything, comments? Jen, uh, when I was reading uh, all the, the different literature you sent us, it sounded like there's an endpoint to this task committee is was did I read that incorrectly that that there's it's not that there's so many there there's an expectation by the the group to have something prepared and ready after a certain amount of time is, correct is, yeah the I, the notion here wasn't that we're we're doing other studies the notion is that we are more of an implementation arm or at least uh, uh taking these studies to the next step. So, so the select board uh, said that we would conclude our work within 18 months. Okay. And it's possible to extend that. So it's not meant to be, you know, going on forever, but that we get some concrete uh, suggestions and recommendations and do some research on possible funding options and, and send that on to the select board make our own sense of priorities and then that's the end as far unless they decide to give us a renewed charge okay okay so so everyone has a a good clear sense of what our job is jennifer can <laughs> i just ask real quick, can, you see, can you see hands raised jennifer can you see our hands raised Yes, I can. Oh, okay, good. Yes. Mark was first. <laughs> Do you have your hand raised? Because your hand... Oh, I'm not seeing Mark's hand at all. Yeah, Mark's I mean, I hand see raised Mark. first. Okay, Mark. Hi, Mark. It's a freaking online question for the fur card comments. Um, Mass DEP has not signed off on it, but they've given a list of corrections that they'd like to see incorporated or additions. And I understand they're not extensive. And so FERCOG is planning to incorporate those and have the draft and have the report completed. Well, no, they're so they said later this summer. So they're close, uh, but it's uh, uh, but it's you know it's there there could be a, there could be some more snags, but I don't think there will be at this point. Oh, okay, good. Uh, Thanks for that. Also. Correction. Also on Monday, uh, I'll be reaching out to them as I do every month. Once a month, I reach out to FERCOG and say, you know, what's the status? So I'll have more information next week. Perfect, thank you. And Tracy. I was just gonna make the suggestion um, just because the FERCOG report's a little 
complex. And the 2007 stormwater study is a little bit more concise that maybe just to familiarize everybody from the, you know, from the get go that we maybe go through the 2007 stormwater study and check off what was done. Um, I think it's that that might be, I, I, I think I remember seeing that in the FERCOG report, but it's such a long report that it just might be easier to do it from the 2007 stormwater study. So, you know, and to kind of give a, a little bit of a sense of like, there's been some things accomplished and, and we've already got, you know, a few things checked off and going over wow. what what the, what the impact of those things has been and, and whether or not they've actually succeeded in accomplishing what their 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 intended goal was or whether we'd still need to look at those areas again and then um going um and maybe then looking to the FERCOG report to see if there's any kind of updated idea or not that's a suggestion yeah no it's a good suggestion and actually the FERCOG report does reference previous studies and previous recommendations and says what at that point, what FERCOG felt their status was. So, so I think there's, when I look at that FERCOG report, it is pretty dense, right? I mean, it's got a lot in there. And the part that feels the most useful at the moment as a starting point is the map that identifies the sites that they said were, were you know, priority sites. And then they have a list of recommendations within those sites and then cross-referencing like the stormwater study and some of these other stories studies as it relates to those sites. That makes a lot of sense to me as well as what the Lake Wyola Association has on their agenda for dealing with things that might be within those sites. Does that, is that clear? Does that make sense to sort of divide it up on a site by site basis? Tom? Oh, I'm not. Tom, I'm, your hand is up. I, yeah, yeah, sorry. I thought it was muted, but I'm not. Um, yeah, that all makes sense. Um, I didn't mean to switch topics, but it's a little related to LWA. Um, but did you want to talk about this for another minute? Because my question's not exactly related. Sorry. Oh, well, Tracy oh, also had her hand up. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't know if Tracy still wanted to address Hold this on. point. Hold on to your question. <laughs> Thanks. The, the only thing I was going to say is that sounds like a better plan, Jennifer. And I, I didn't, I, I, you, you seem to be really familiar with the FERCOG report. So thank you. It just, you know, it's so overwhelming to do the whole thing in a big picture. But if we divide it up by site, it's very specific because there are particular projects that are mentioned within those sites. You know, and then we could look at those projects as it relates to what's been done or not done or what was done and needs to be redone and things like that. So um, now this is another time where I would want to share my screen. So hey, Tom, do you want to ask your question before I do that? Please, yeah. Um, it's about uh, some of our duties, I guess you would call it, in terms of um, we'll be making presentations to uh, different boards and LWA. And I just wanted to know, because I've been following the town process of this getting formed, are you aware how do we um, how do we uh, interface with LWA officially? I'm a member of theirs, but I don't know that I've heard them talk about this task force yet very much. It hasn't really existed yet. Um, so will it be that they will have board meetings we'll go to, or will we just talk with some of the board members now and then, or do we have any kind of what do we have established with them already? I can uh, make I can uh, make the answer. Uh -huh. um, Go ahead, Charlene. Um, I I don't have a hand to raise, so I'm sorry if I sound like I'm interrupting, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't see one on my screen. Um, I know I know the board is uh, knows of the new task force. We have monthly meetings. And we have on our agenda every month uh, update on town meetings. And I brought to the attention to the board all the members. I uh, we listed them, and I uh, I think I even gave a a brief handout of our uh, mission as a as a group. And so they're aware of the task force um, because it was so new. There was no more discussion on it because obviously we hadn't had our first meeting, and so. 
I, I will always go back and update uh, what we've discussed. That would be great. Can you let I, us know when those you know, meetings? I would love to attend those meetings too. Can you always let us know when they're happening? Because I don't know how to find that out. Well, they're on Thursdays, and I told Jen the next one is um, the last, oh, whatever that last Thursday in July is. Uh, yeah, you said that was the 25th, Charlene. Okay, so what, whatever date that is. And they're at 7 o'clock, and they're uh, a Zoom meeting. Okay, and do you know how we would get no, this? No, Charlene, in? is that an open meeting? Um, well, I just wanted to ask, it's a public that, charity. It has to be open. Yeah, yeah, it is. But, <laughs> it's a um, public organization. Yeah. Uh, um, how do we get the Zoom link, and where is it posted? I can, I can let uh, uh, Cheryl know because she sets us up with the Zoom. Not Cheryl. Matt Barowick sets us up, and I can let him know. Why don't you text me your awesome. information? Okay. And then I can forward that to him, awesome. and. Um, I, you would then be able to get on. Thanks. It's, so it's almost, I was going to say, I think it's maybe the fifth, fifth agenda item that we have. It's not in the very beginning. We have, it's pretty standard from beginning to end all the time. But we did, because of the importance of knowing what's going on in the town, uh, we felt it's always good to have an update. And, and um uh, with town meetings and sometimes we have discussions because there are updates and sometimes we don't. So certainly that would be something. And if you wanted to speak uh, on your interest as a select board member, that would certainly be helpful to hear it basically from the, 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 the source, a select board person. I'm on the planning board. Eric's going to be the select board person. Oh, I thought but, you were select board. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No worries, but I hear you. Um, thank you. Um, that would be great. I look forward to that. Okay, but I'll be sending my information to Jen and then yeah, so yeah, you want to get okay. Now, we've for lost me. everybody's picture. I don't know where everybody went. Oh, oh no. <laughs> we're, we're here. Tracy, before we, we get to your raised hand, Charlene, is it um, is it appropriate to imagine that somewhere down the line, if we have um, let's say our committee has developed a list of projects and priorities that we would like to, um, you know, that, that we think would be the highest priorities and they could be high priorities because they can get accomplished easily or they could be high priorities because they have the greatest impact. But would we then ask formally to make a presentation to the board so that we could get put on the agenda with enough time to do that? I don't see any problem with that. I, I think, you know, one of the reasons I, um, I'm happy to be on this particular board is um, I think there's some misinformation uh, that might be circulating in the town about our Lake Wyola Association having uh, lots of money <laughs> and we don't. Mm -hmm. And so uh, realistically, idealistically, uh, any kind of information of what would be important endeavors for uh, the group would be greatly appreciated, but realistically, there there is a money uh, uh, item in there. And that's why I think this committee is really important because having the town involved, the Lake Wyola, uh, Lake Wyola Association, and it's, it, it sounds like it's an immense financial movement that's going to have to happen. And I'm glad we're going to be looking for sources, but to, you know, hand a list to the Lake Wyola Association and think that realistically that can be done through the finances that we currently have, uh, it, it would be uh, misinformation at best. And I, I know I've heard people saying that, I don't know what that site is. Is it Shootsbury Now or some, some site that there's a, things being said about the association which um, are not accurate. So you know, we know what our bottom line is. We have our, you know, we have an excellent treasurer and certainly any way we can share it, but always, re, you know, in the back of everybody's mind or even in the front of everybody's mind is, as everybody knows, money is usually the bottom line to any kind of project. So I'm, I'm hoping we can find a way to realistically be able to do this and make sure all the needs uh, of this task force that are 
are possible can be done. So uh, any, you know, more than welcome to create lists and let people know because, you know, we're always open to that. I wanted to just say, and Tracy, I know your hand is up, so don't lose it, that the, the whole thinking behind this, I believe, is not to lay the financial burden at any one organization, oh, but to find, because there are, and you'll see in the FERCOG report that there are opportunities for public and private partnerships, you know, grant opportunities. And that's and wonderful. As yeah. I've been trying to argue for a really long time is that the water is flowing regardless of the boundaries of who owns what property. Right. And that there, there's a way to, so it, my intent was never let's hand this list to any particular group oh, good. <laughs> at all. You know, it was yeah. like, let's, let's see how we can um, get creative and think outside of the box. So Tracy, sorry, I left you holding a long time. That's okay. Um, so I just want, so Charlene, we can give you our new shootsbury.org email addresses and you'll send us the Zoom link to the LWA board meetings? I, I, we're open meeting, yes. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm gonna try to share this again. Um, and I think I'm getting somewhere. Ah, do you see it? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Wow. I'm brilliant. <laughs> okay. This is the FURCOG map that shows their sites. And you can see that they said that um, they believe that sites one, two, three, and four, and seven were the highest priorities. That's pretty much all of them. <laughs> But you can see that some of them, for instance, site three, I don't know how specific these circles are, include Lake Wyola Association owned roads, as well as Wendell Road, which is a town road, right? Site five also has Lake Wyola Association roads, but also properties on Wendell Road, which is a hillside that goes straight down to the lake. Site seven, which is very huge, includes a lot of Wendell and then this North Cove area. This is almost exclusively Lake Wyola property. This is not so exclusively that because there's a town road here and this is a town road. So even if we consider these sites to be sort of loosely drawn boundaries, we can see how, how projects that are within these sites are gonna need some collaboration between various stakeholders. You know, there's just, there's no way to get around it. The water flow asks us to collaborate. Mm -hmm. So because within the report are specific projects within each of these sites, it made sense to me and I'm open to whatever anyone else has arrived at that that we kind of break these down and I don't know whether we would do that as an entire group or whether we'd you know have you know two people look at each of these sites and look at the report and the projects that they identify within those sites and first see okay are we are these our main projects you know are these our main trouble spots that we want to try to um, identify um, solutions for and funding sources for. I see Jim has his hand up. Oh, I just wanted to say yes. I, I think the, I the map loops are, the circles are, have to do with the difficulty of drawing specific boundaries. These are more <laughs> suggestive than um, right. definitive. So that I think site six is actually Wendell Road. 
Okay, uh, right. And that site four is Locks Pond. Uh, in their discussions of, I've read the FERCOG report. So um, the discussion of site four is Locks Pond Road and the uh, culverts and what has been done and what can be done. Whereas, um, and you know, and obviously that site two then is is uh, mostly um, Lake Drive, and you know, so that the other ones are more suggestive of Shore Drive or Shore, and uh, the Laurels, so that, um, and they do have suggestions about what are the low and high priorities. So I, uh, if I can move to that a little bit and. What I'd like to say is that um, since I think water <laughs> does move downhill, although it does cross a lot of boundaries, that um, dealing with Windle Road and Locks Pond Road and seeing what effects the project's done on those roads would do to the lower sites where the water drains to is makes the most sense to me. I'm putting that, that out there for discussion. So just to recap, you're putting out that uh, initial focus on whatever is being looked at in site four, I'll use the site four yeah. and site six would be our starting point. Well, I, 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 you know, disagree with Winston Churchill. I think when you fight on the beaches, you've already lost um, that. <laughs> right. I think we have to go uphill and see what can be done. And then we will still have to address the lower elevations, but there may be less water to deal with if oh, the right. higher elevation actions are effective. Right, that's a good point. So how about other feedback on, you know, just ways to jump into a pretty complex situation here? You know, how do we, how do we identify these potential projects and then move toward what kind of funding might be necessary? What do you think? The suggestion of maybe beginning on whatever is mentioned on site four and site six. Tracy. Well, uh, Tracy, uh, oops, I, Tracy's hand was up first. That's okay. Yeah, I'm talking, that's me. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hi. Uh, so yeah, Jim, what you had to say makes a lot of sense. It really makes a lot of sense. And so it seems this is just a thought I had when we've got a a site that is town related to maybe putting Eric Stocker and Steve Sullivan along with one of us on that site just because they, you know, they well, especially Steve. I mean, Steve's going to especially if it has to do with the road. Yeah. He's going to know the road and what's been done and where there's problems and stuff like that. Um, and then the priority um, sites in the report, maybe we start with those. But one of the things that I'm wondering, and maybe uh, Jim and, and um, Jen, you seem to be most familiar with the FERCOG report. I've gone through it, but not, not with a fine tooth comb by any means, um, are some of the priority sites or are the priority sites, the more expensive, like larger project sites. So I guess that's what I'm sort of wondering is if we start out breaking it down with big, you know, like a chart with, you know, things that, things that have been done, things that are partway done and could use a little tweaking with something that maybe would be a smaller scale project uh, you know, with it, with a with a local capital fundraising campaign or, or a grant or something, um, and then moving, and then what are the larger scale ones, um, and what ones can we do? Because I'm going to also guess that some of the smaller projects are going to be impacted maybe by the bigger projects, and you have to do the bigger one first. You know, I don't know, but like, kind of getting in and looking at this with a fine tooth comb. And I'm I'm wondering also in doing that, if it might be easier if we were all in a room together to just sort of start out hammering that out. Okay, good suggestion. Bob, your hand was up and now it's down. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk. Um, uh, 
there was something you said related to about how how do we uh, prioritize these things, and it, it really reminded me a lot of um, uh, the MVP process that the town went through a few years back. And I think um, you know, having talked to different people who do the MVP pro program in Eastern and Western Mass, that I think a, that a lot of these uh, projects might fall under the MVP and the, the, the great, that's a Massachusetts vulnerability plan. Um, and the great thing about that is, is a considerable amount of money comes uh, with that grant and it can be used both on private and public land, which as you already mm -hmm. described, kind of ma matches what we're looking at here, both both uh, town land as well as private land. So um, uh, one of the great things about that grant is you can get it to um, uh, for the planning stage where you have an engineer um, be paid to kind of assist with a, a prioritization. And th that would be the first grant. And then the second grant would be money to fix the problem. So anyway, I just wanted to put that on the table as a possibility. I know that Amherst has received uh, money related to uh, uh, Puffer's Pond. Uh, I know that uh, Chester had a very similar project and they got a huge amount of money uh, related to their dirt roads. Uh, in Chester, Massachusetts, uh, from the MVP. So I just wanted to kind of put that on the table, just kind of, kind of it felt like it came up. Well, that's a fine meal to put on the table. <laughs> um, so, Bob, are you saying that strategically, maybe focus on that, on that as a vehicle? Yeah, I think... Um... I think it might be worthwhile to 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 uh, in addition to all, all all of us and the selectmen when they when they attend, I think uh, in inviting um, uh, one of those consultants that does MVP or or the MVP rep for the state and tell them our our problems on a meeting like this, a public meeting. I think I think that might might yield you know might plant a seed that would yield some fruit later on. And do we need to have specific projects identified um, prior to such a thing? So we're talking about concrete, you know, here we'd like to try to accomplish this or that. Yeah, you know, I, I honestly think this is a good time to bring it in because you've identified, you know, this map in front of us identifies the problems. And um, then the, uh, you know, in, 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 you could possibly have the people from the MVP identify the solutions because they do it all the time. How do you how do others feel about letting this be our um starting point? If I can jump in, um yeah. the FERCOG re Jim, you froze. froze up, Jim. I don't know if you can hear us. A long window road oh, at, there you are. at the top of um, the laurels as part of the Wendell Road type of work. The the other, you know, we've had the problem coming off of Wendell Road and coming down to shore. And if we could stop some of, I mean, those, they have very specific projects that are suggested there. So that I think once we take a, a look at the FERCOG report, it's not like we have to invent the projects. They're there and we can... Right work off of that and start prioritizing prioritizing uh, projects and 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 think of the granting agencies that could support them. I'm so done. how about this? How about this? Why don't we between now and the next meeting, which we'll you know set up, why don't each of us get familiar with um, these? two locations, what they're identifying here is site four and site six, and what they've identified in FERCOG as projects within those sites, just so we know, you know, you know, something concrete that are within those that it, you know, is addressable with the right expertise or engineering study or intervention or something. And then when, when we all have a handle on those, then we can follow Bob's suggestion of inviting some of the people who, who have um, dealt with this MVP grants to, to come and we can talk about these specific projects. Does that, is that a reasonable way to go? 
Um, Tracy first, then Tom. What I thought I understood Bob to say was that we wouldn't need to necessarily choose one or two sites, but the entire thing and have them review it. And so I'm hoping Bob could clarify. Yes, yeah, so, um, certainly there, there are a number of different ways to do to do this. Um, but I, I think uh, they do this kind of thing all the time and they, they well may reach the same conclusions that Jim did that uh, starting from the outside in is a good idea because uh, that immediately may reduce the, the problem as you get, get closer to the lake. So, um, uh, and um, uh, them being likely en engineers that, um, you know, work with this stuff all the time, they, they, they might be a good member of this group to have kind of as part of the team. So, um... Tom, I have a question for Bob, but go ahead, Tom. Thanks. Um, yeah, I like the idea of starting as a group on one or two sites, uh, and we could maybe have as a goal down the line, one or two people focusing on like site three, two, four, and five down the line, or seven, the ones that we don't do at the start, just so that all of us kind of have the same like experience of the exercise of going through. What does it, because I'm a little, already unclear and I know it will become clear once I do it on what am I going to be doing when I evaluate site six or site four how am I going to identify the projects that FERCOG has identified will we be writing things on paper and um, and then I like the idea of also uh, seeing how the MVP will kind of guide us to uh, prioritizing those projects that we find so uh, and I, I it does seem like physics is with us. If we say we start at the high points, I like that point as well that somebody made. Um, I just feel as though I'd feel more comfortable. Like at, when you first talked, Jennifer, I thought, oh, maybe I'll take site three with somebody because I live on the laurels. But now I'm thinking, you know, I'd like as a group, as you just mentioned, all of us do a site or two, and then um, we can work more individually, maybe. I hope that was clear and helpful. <laughs> you. Jim. Um, okay. I like the map, but one of the things that we haven't discussed that might be good to bump up is something that's not an area, but is the educational component um, that FERCOP discussion uh, puts forward. And, and I think um, this relates to letting people know what we're up to, um, that um, Shutesbury is kind of a small town and it has many of the characteristics of small towns that people talk about things and sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong. And and our I think our advantage would be to start educating people what we're doing and what sort of projects we're interested in and the educational component. I mean, some of the really small things are the things that people can do on their own. I mean, I've used to have water coming across the road, down my driveway, across the rest of my property and into a neighbor's yard. And I put in a rain garden and it's intercepted that or it comes down the driveway. I kind of put a bar in to shunt it off into the garden and it can hold all but the biggest storms. So that just telling people about rain gardens and other things that they can do rather than figuring out how to get the water off their property as quickly as possible. Um, there might be some value in, in us thinking about that and grants for that type of public education. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the FERCOG report divides itself at the end there into structural ways to deal with stormwater um, load into the lake, non-structural means, which would be um, more maintenance and management means. And also, like you mentioned, there's a whole section on public education. So definitely, I think as an, you know, either during this work or certainly as an end point, having some public education um, proposals and funding for those um, would be key. 
because you're right. And, and, you know, I think Mark Rivers long ago said to me, you know, a lot of the things that can be done are, are doable, you know, mm -hmm. they just need the will and the focus. So I think yep. that, oh, sorry, no, go ahead, Charlene. Well, I, again, I, I don't have a button for the hand, so I apologize. Yeah, no, um, okay. The MVP discussion, I know in the town of Deerfield, there is a defined committee that is MVP. Um, if I've got the right letter, yes. Um, is that true in Shootsbury or like how do we access this information if there's no such committee that exists in Shootsbury? Is, it, is there a website we go to? Is there... A, a statewide site we go to because as I said, this group is, it has been in existence and they have one focus only, but you could always go to them. So does Shootsbury have a defined group of people on that MVP? No. So how, how would we access that? I'm saying no, I don't think so. Um, I think there has been an application for an MVP grant in the past that was unsuccessful. Bob has more experience with this, mm -hmm. but I think Bob, if I understand correctly, we can, through you perhaps, and the people that you know, um, invite some consultants, as you said, to come and meet with our committee. Yes. Is that, did I get that right? Yeah, you, you kind of uh, uh, faded in can and out me, there, Bob? but um uh i i would think that that is true and and really it would be a good idea to uh talk to mr stalker about this because that is kind of a um probably a town management type type level thing okay uh, great so to clarify just on that and i know we want to wrap this up and not go on into all hours of the night even though i know we're having a blast um <laughs> uh, i'm wondering I'm wondering about if we get an MVP person to come, do we need, we as a committee need to be more familiar with what is going on in these different sites or to show them that FERCOG has come up with this general kind of concept plan and we're trying to figure out a starting in the nitty gritty of these details in order to have that be a productive meeting or would they have read this report or some summary of it before they came or how to make that meeting the most useful to everybody. What do you think about that, Bob? Yeah, no, I think they would eat, eat this stuff up. Uh, we have some very good um, uh, studies in addition to this one. Um, and these are all data that they, that they would use to, um, uh, <laughs> in order to to put together and, and, and solve a solution hey so a, a lot of the legwork has been has been done um and uh they could they could potentially take a look at this and and uh come up with ideas that we're not even thinking about so so you would propose once we have a contact if we do have a contact of forwarding them um these studies and then yeah, they would I, come to us. I, I, I think that would be great. And I think, uh, I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be um, stepping out of line. So it probably would be worth uh, bouncing it off a uh, selectman stalker mm -hmm. ahead of time uh, to, um, um, because there's, there is a certain obligation to, to the to the town. But I, I think the town has committees like this so that we can generate suggestions for pro projects of this nature. Okay, great. And then, so why don't we, in the interest of, you know, wrapping it up, what I have, what I heard here as a plan is to focus on, in our, in our minds, focus on these uphill sites, but let the MVP consultants weigh in on that that we would look more closely and this we could do at our own leisure at what individual projects are identified within these sites so that we're familiar too with what is being suggested we can do that you know on our own either by reading by visiting by some combination we don't have to study them necessarily but just so that we have some grounding you know on the ground um 
And that's about all. And now I would talk to Eric um, as a select board member about how to how to get some of the MVP people um, in contact with us. I could forward them the studies that we have and things like that and try and get a meeting date. Um, getting familiar also, not just with the sites, but like Jim said, some of the public education ideas, you know, and what that could be assembled into a grant proposal too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there is a whole section in the FERCOG report that talks about potential funding sources and what they would be good for. Um, so I think getting getting grounded in that work seems like the next best step for us to me. Tracy. Um, I, this is, I guess, a question again for Bob, because this is the, I know you've, you've done an MVP app and you've gotten a good, a pretty good chunk of money for your for your other um, Conservation Commission. Um, what with the public and private? So you've got the town. So that would be Eric getting permission. But the private is LWA. So how does that work? Like, how how does that? You know, because you're saying we need permission from the town, from Eric Stocker, or from you know from the select board. Um, what 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 permission are we trying to get? And how does the private intertwine with that in terms of the grant application type you know for MVP yeah that that, that is a, a great question um uh and it probably would be best to ask uh what are the MVP professionals how to do that certainly uh nobody can do work on anybody else's property without their permission so um uh but I do think that um uh the pr private owners um would be interested in in solutions that would make the, the the problems better. So, um, um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I, I believe everybody would be involved in in parties in this in in, in this in an MVP project. I think it's probably best to, um, um, you know, and I, and I wouldn't want to speak for that agency uh, MVP. Um, but uh, I think probably have, having them, one of them on a meeting with us to talk about it and the, you know, how it was done in Chester and how much money they got and the, the two phases that they did, the planning phase and then the, the construction phase and how those were paid for with the state money. I think, I think that would be very, uh, a, a good, good educated way to begin this process. So, so are you suggesting we start with that where we have the MVP people come, we send them this, they come and they explain everything to us about how we move forward and then we move forward. It feels to me like that might be a better idea for us to be, you know, it, getting a good use of our time. Does you that? Know, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't want to usurp uh, the in, input of this group, but I, I, I think probably you know, we, we should pr proceed as, as, as planned. Um, but also if, if we have their input and find out what they're looking for, uh, I think, it, and, uh, they are a fat source of money. I can tell you, um, that, uh, if we work, if that is our desire to unlock those funds, if we have an idea of what they're looking for, we, we, we might be, uh, advised to direct our efforts in that direction. So I think I'm hearing that the Bob, do you know? Go ahead, Charlene. Then I Jim. just wonder if if the town of Chester were they dealing with private groups or was it just town um, money that they were looking for? Do you know anything specific about that? Yeah, I, I don't know. I I believe it was both private and public lands because they had a situation very much like. Uh, we do in Shootsbury with uh, multiple dirt roads and, and runoff issues. Okay, so that's great. They've, they've had experience with that. Okay. I'd just like to second Bob's point that um, there's, the roads on the Lake Wyola Association are Lake Wyola's, but the, the rest is private. Owned. Yes, and um, that that's where the education really does come in is that when we need to get the private owners to come and join us with this project of uh, so that somebody will 
think it's okay to put um, a retention pond in a corner of their property so that you can divert water off the road. Um, so that there's, I mean, there's a lot that's going on. Some of it is voluntary, as Mark said, of just getting people to uh, pl play nice with us. Um, but the, and just to, off on the side, um, another group of folks to think about, and it's in the uh, um, Franklin County report, um, was the public education of working with the schools. There's actually a mention in there of having schools develop a component, an environmental component, using Lake Biola as part of uh, their education about environmental issues so that we can reach out in that direction as well. That gets complicated because it may involve Amherst as well, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. So um, I also wanted to say, well, just, I don't want to lose this one thing. I think that a task that I might have is to reach out to Eric and say that we're getting start. Well, he is on our committee. He's just not here tonight, but to say we're getting started in this work and sometime in the not too distant future, we'd like to invite someone from the MVP group to um, to talk with us about, you know, the kind of things we're looking at and how how their process might work. Is that does that capture part of it, at least on the, you know, Tracy had said, well, what are we really asking Eric for? I think we're asking for him to make the ask of of the MVP people. Is that about right? Yes. OK. Um, I also wanted to say that I was talking to another person, an engineer person who lives around here, who said that there is an office for, of the state called the Office of Rural Affairs. And that they have money, too, that's hardly ever used. Mm. <laughs> and that we may um, be able, if we had identifiable product, projects that fit their criteria, we might be able to access some of that money. And that we might invite that director to come and talk to our group once we have a more concrete idea of, of what we're asking for. And and this, you know, education could be a great component. It maybe it's structural stuff too. I, I don't know what their criteria are, but I think there's a number of um, things to start looking at. Tracy. So my last question is: is what should what are we what's our next task as individuals? Yeah. Like, should we right. maybe partner right here with somebody on the meeting that we're going to go and look at site two and three and somebody else is going to go? To, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I think from what I'm hearing, and I know we're going to wrap this up, I want to get a meeting date set for our next meeting or something like that. I think what, what I'm hearing is that if we got very familiar with that last section of the FERCOG report where individual interventions are mentioned both structural things, non-structural things, educational things. So that when we talk to these other groups or we're looking at research um, options, we have a, a stronger sense of what we're trying to raise money for. So it makes sense to me that we grind, grind we ground ourselves really well in the last um, few, few pages of that FERCOG report. And I think you'll see right away how they divide it up you know they they're pretty specific these are structural improvements that we think are needed etc and then we and then i'll talk to eric about getting an mvp person i can reach out to this office of rural affairs and then and we'll meet again once once we've done that um what do you think? I don't, and and I think we could take it on ourselves to go around to these places and look at these sites. I think updating them with you know new information from the roads committee and from Stephen Sullivan would be really good too. But that's my sense. I don't know about the rest of you. And we can go. I mean, as it, it won't be a violation of the open meeting law for me to say like Tom and I to get together and go look at some things that's that's all fine well you can't deliberate you can't well, deliberate you mean deliberating you mean well as long as we're not a quorum yeah that's what i thought so as as two of us or three of us can talk we shouldn't deliberate even as two or three because then it could eventually become a serial deliberation or something 
right. other people join in eventually. But as long as it's really just a very legitimate like site visit type of thing um, where you're just gathering information. Yes. Uh, and not evaluating it, so this way. Right. That's how I understand it. Okay. That's how I understand it too. Now, Jen, at one point in the meeting, I think it was Jim that made uh, a suggestion that we narrow those sites to a few to begin with. Four and six, I think, were the numbers. Um, right. I personally like that idea. I think sometimes when you look at an immense project that obviously this will become um, and you take on too much, it it doesn't to me feel like we're going to be able to do as great a job as if we take our baby steps first. And that's just from past experience for myself as an educator. So I, I hope, I don't know, I'd like to revisit. I like the idea that you had said, read in, in the report about sites four and six, get very familiar with it. And then maybe read and also read this last section that uh, you said is, is very important. I, I think that was um, something we should also put into our thinking about pre preparation for the next meeting. Sounds good to me. How about everybody else? Jim. Okay. Um, just when you're looking at the FERCOG report, the scariest bits, the ones with all the tables about phosphorus and sediment runoff Correct. are information that they put forward as they develop a model of the phosphorus levels and the sediment levels. And in fact, you can probably, you know, read those sections diagonally that, that they're, the end result is, uh, you know, it's wise to worry about phosphorus. Um, there's no problem presently in the lake with phosphorus, but maybe there will be someday, so we'll include it. And the model then is this lake, given the catchment, would have would we would expect to get this much phosphorus. So it's it's kind of a modeling exercise and not much about what you need to what the operational side of it is. It's it's you know um, so that if you're going to put the effort into reading the FERCOG, that you can go through quickly because you're, you're right. You're not going to end up with an MA in in geology <laughs> afterwards, but it, it's that's it. Yeah, I'm going to suggest that the bulk of the FERCOG report is context for us to, and these other reports as well. Uh, the wildlife habitat report, for example, is context for us to use as backup when we apply for funding. If you look at page 55 till the end of the FERCOG report, you'll be totally well grounded in what our work is. Oh, okay. So, um, and that's probably a total of about 12 pages. And a lot of it is tables, but tables of you know, projects and funding and whether these are public and private, but start on page 55 <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and save the rest for later would be my, my recommendation. Okay, so are we good to, to talk about trying to come up with another meeting date? Is that something we should try and do in a meeting or do you want to try and do it like we did before? Seems like mm -hmm. Thursdays no. from my survey Except for, except for the last Thursday, I think, which is when Charlene has an LWA board meeting. Oh. Is that true, Charlene, that generally Thursdays yes. are okay for you? Yeah. Um, the only thing I, I wanted clarification. And Bob, I thought, I think... Can I just have clarification from Tom and from uh, Tracy? Um, you mentioned coming to the Lake Wyola meeting. I usually set, I, I set the agenda and then I send it out for people to tweak it um it, because i if i forget things i will put down um did you want to present information about your idea of the task what is your um i have to sort of be able to explain this because people will say well why are they coming and I, i'd like to know your intent so that i can explain that should it become a question 
and, and I know Tom mentioned and Tracy. Um, so what would be my explanation to the uh, group? Because I, I'll, I'll put you onto the agenda. Um, I guess oh, one question from me would be, are, is anyone from the public just allowed to attend the meetings? Because I thought they were open meetings. Well, we, we've always had, um, we have two annual meetings a year, which are open their membership meetings and but in order to vote you have to obviously be a member our our meetings we've just never had this request before so i'm taking a giant leap because i know we're a nonprofit and you know we follow open meeting and i'm taking a leap that this is okay to do but of course i'll i'll check with the people who are yeah. keen. i don't know if you know art but art is very 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 expert in all of this but um should you be able, you know, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to, but um, what would be, what can I explain to people as to your um, reasons yeah. for coming? That's um, all. Yeah, we have I, um, agenda. I, I run a 50 or just left running a 501c3 in Athol and Orange. Yeah. Um, and to our meetings only ever came board members um, or like an invited person, like an expert. That said, because we were a 501c3, we knew we always had to allow any member of the public into our meeting until- You had to rule out. I'm oh, sorry. You, you had like, to rule out? No, I, I just mean that we we wouldn't be allowed to ask a member of the public why they were attending. We would just have to allow them to attend because of I our see. 501c3 status. That said, um, so I think that that's probably step one is like just by being a 501c3, the meetings must be open to the public just to attend. Um, wow. I would like to attend, I would love to participate and even um, give a five minute spiel about what um, the future seems to be holding for this storm erosion task force. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, so yeah, I just wanted to uh, know more as a member of LWA, um, know more as a member of the public and then I would really welcome a minute or two. I didn't even know that you were thinking of that, but I would, absolutely welcome a few minutes just to present ourselves. Uh, but going forward, I would really like to be just an active attendee at LWA board meetings. Is okay. all so you actually would like to speak? Yes. Here. Okay, yeah. all right. And I mean, if it's easier for you, you know, you can set up an agenda any way you want, but would it be easier for you to have your presentation in the beginning of the meeting? Is that something you would rather have or? That wouldn't honestly matter to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me just pop in here if I could. I know there's plenty of hands up, but we're a group, you know? So making presentations to other groups yeah. seems like that we'd want to, you know, you're representing the ideas of the whole group. Are you representing your own opinions? Are you, because if- you Well, then, you know what? I think that's really important. Um, just tell people, Charlene, that I want to attend because one, I'm a member of the public and two, I'm also a member of LWA. Okay. Um, okay. And actually, I, I don't think I should present until uh, this group had an idea of what I would be saying. Um, but I need to have a start. I need to start knowing the LWA process and members and feel. And so I just need to be a, an active part of these meetings. Yeah. Um, and okay, so Charlene, you had, you had asked about me specifically too. So yes, I, I don't have any intention of presenting anything. I just, you said that the meetings were open. Um, so I just wanted to come. That's, that, that's it. And I'm an, I'm, an, I'm an LWA member as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Bob, your hand's been up for a long time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, back uh, two conversations ago, we were talking about meeting times. Yeah. Um, Thursdays are good for me, with the exception, like today, where there's a CONCOM -con meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if I could just send you the the CONCOM -con dates, and and they just have, I just have to do a different Thursday than that. Okay, yeah, that's great. I'm going to shoot for and hope that CONCOM -con isn't meeting on August first is that too soon for people to meet do you think do you think we need to give ourselves more time or should we go um should we go to the eighth or let's find a date in august that doesn't conflict with charlene or with concom 
The eighth would be better for me. <laughs> okay. Does the eighth work for you, Charlene? Um, as long as I know it, when we set our next um, LWA meeting, I'll avoid the eighth with everybody. Okay. So if others can say that the eighth works for them, Jim, your hand is up. Oh, I was just going to say the eighth is fine. That That's a, a okay. good thing. Okay, Tom, yeah. Okay, and I think based on what I know of Eric and Stephen's schedules, that'll be good for them. So why don't we say then the eighth at is seven? We start at seven thirty this time because I had some problems. I'm glad I did because of the whole internet thing. But is seven better than seven thirty? Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. So let's go for seven on August eighth. And Jen, will you send out a reminder to everybody once you get all our emails and all? Sure, I'll be sending an, an, a reminder and a proposed agenda, and then any concepts that people feel should get added to the agenda, you can send back. Um, I hope I capture most of what um, we've said we were gonna do, and you can correct that. Uh, and Bob, your hand was up, but it's no longer up, so you're good? Okay. Oh, so everybody... I, I just one more thing. Can are we gonna try to have a a beginning and end time for our meet? Well, we have a beginning time, but like an end time, are we gonna try to stick to an hour or what an hour and a just so you know, knowing yeah, I'd love it to be an hour. I'm sure everybody would love it to be an hour. So we'll we'll be we'll be as efficient as we can. Not too bad this time for the first meeting either, but um yeah, let's shoot for an hour. All right, I'll do a recap for all of us and for the two people who weren't here, just you know what we've what we're gonna work on before the next meeting. And I'll talk to Eric about MVP, et cetera. So if anyone's got uh, uh, other things to add, or we'll say, I don't know if we have to be so formal if someone has to make a motion to adjourn, <laughs> but um We'll adjourn. I, I actually right? think we do. Okay. Probably and should. Yeah, I think, and then you, okay. somebody makes a motion. All and then right, so let's have a then we all, okay. I would like to make a motion that we adjourn. I'll I second. 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 Okay, we have a second. <laughs> okay, good. We're adjourning. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. I'm excited about our group. I think we have some potential to do some good here. So um, make sure to give any feedback to me if things need to change the way we're doing stuff. Thanks, Jen. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Take care. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.